Let's bring in Congresswoman Kat Kimmick and Congressman Darrell Issa, both on the House Subcommittee for the Weaponization of Government. Congresswoman Kamek, to you first, your reaction to this breaking news that former President Donald Trump has been indicted by a Manhattan grand jury. Well, it's shocking for sure, and it really is a slippery slope when we start indicting our political opponents, particularly active candidates for office. But listen, we're here because we are addressing the weaponization of government, and I don't think there's a better example of that than what we're seeing play out. Instead of cleaning up the streets of New York, a George Soros-backed DA is focused on indicting a former president, and that is priority number one? Give me a break. This is absolutely a political witch hunt through and through. I don't think that there's anything that's going to actually come of this, except for the fact this will have far-reaching implications for the election. Congressman Issa, you've been in Congress uh, for a number of years, serving uh, a couple different terms. Were you shocked that the Congress wasn't given a heads up on these charges? Well, it's, it's inappropriate not to give us a heads up, but we're not surprised, uh, and that includes the Speaker of the House not being told. I think the important thing to remember, though, is this was a campaign promise by the DA. He said he would indict the president. He has now done so. So nothing could be more, not just as Kat said, weaponization, but this is truly a campaign promise of someone who got an 83 percent market share uh, in, a, in Manhattan, which is about 83 percent Democrat. Uh, Congresswoman McCammack, pick up on that. Speaking of the politics of this, uh, how does this play out? Because, again, this is coming uh, far enough ahead of the presidential election uh, that there's time for, you know, uh, to adjust, if you will. But what are the political implications in your mind right now? Well, speaking as someone who's been involved in politics for a number of years, I can tell you that Donald Trump leans into the fight. And this, I believe, will actually grow his margins, grow his numbers, because Americans have been naturally skeptical of big government, and now they see this, a trumped-up charge, no pun intended. And so I think Americans are going to resist this. I think people who are on the fence about supporting uh, another run from uh, President Donald Trump, they're now saying, you know what? I'm all in now. So I think this is actually going to backfire on the DA. I think this is going to backfire on the Democrats. And again, we know that Trump is a fighter. He leans into the fight. He's not going to go anywhere. You know, Congressman, I said when someone is uh, uh, prosecuted, they get a jury of their peers. But to your point, in Manhattan, 86 percent of the voters voted for Joe Biden. 13 percent of the voters voted for Donald Trump. And the ones who don't like Trump in Manhattan, they really don't like him. Can he, if this goes to trial, can he get a, a fair jury panel that will actually listen to the evidence and not just go for political retribution? Well, you never know, but the first step will be to try to get it removed from Manhattan, uh, and that will take time. You know, you've got to remember that in our history, and you have to go a long way back, we once indicted a seated congressman for violation of the Alien Sedition Act, and he was, uh, he was convicted and, in fact, served six months. And, by the way, he was reelected. <laughs> That's a good point. Congresswoman McCammack, but on that note, and... New York City, Manhattan does things differently, and I, do, I don't mean that as a compliment, but grand jury proceedings sure. are supposed to be secret. And this, yeah. you know, comes out, voila, at the end of a Thursday. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster, for lack of a better way to put it. You think about just a few days ago, we were hearing that they were going to adjourn and break until the end of April. You know, a couple weeks ago, it was supposed to be, hey, there's going to be an indictment coming on Wednesday. It has been a complete up and down roller coaster of events with facts coming out that prove not to be necessarily true. Uh, up to this point, we still don't really know what all is listed in this indictment. So I'm curious to see the details, as I'm sure so many other Americans are. But it did seem to be timed very well with yeah. our adjourning for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone can miss that. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm a big stickler on making sure we keep the norms of our government, right? I mean, we've had certain norms, you know, since the Congress first started, you know, uh, over 200 years ago. And when you break those norms, um, it's really hard to get them back. So whether it was Nancy Pelosi kicking Republicans off committee that Kevin McCarthy actually put on, or now uh, you have uh, Democrat DAs going after a former 
uh, Republican president. You break those norms, and what they'll find is that Republicans will respond in kind. And I can only imagine that some Republican, D some Republican DA somewhere is going to prosecute Joe Biden. If, if the DOJ will not, they'll prosecute Joe Biden on uh, alleged crimes with Hunter Biden and Russia, um, not Russia, but, but, but uh, you know, foreign payments to his son that were funneled to Joe Biden. I can only see that as a future, and I don't see that as a good future for America. But when you break these norms, I don't think you can put it back together. Well, I think you're exactly right that the actions of the vice president during his time and then in between for those four years certainly potentially could lead to an indictment. And if so, you'd be indicting a seated president. Uh, now, the court has said that you can't actually try a, a president during his presidency, but his presidency is going to end. So you could literally have that hanging over Joe Biden for the next couple of years. And I'm sure there were people vindictive enough to do it. I would hope that we, as, uh, as your federal representatives, would push back on that exactly the same as we're going to push back on this indictment, which comes on a, on a charge that doesn't actually truly exist in the law. And even if it did, it would be beyond the statute of limitations. So there's a lot of dismissal uh, possibilities. And I'm sure that some of us will be on the amicus brief for them. Uh, we're getting reaction from President Trump's family. Eric Trump, his son, said this is a third world prosecutorial misconduct. Is the opportunistic targeting of a political opponent in a campaign year? We will be getting more reaction, of course, coming in from all corners of the globe, probably. Congresswoman Kamak, what do you think the reaction will be in Congress, in the, in, within the halls of Congress and on Capitol Hill, uh, of course, Congressman Issa mentioned that you're going on spring break, not the kind that young people participate in. But, uh, but, but wait a second, wait no, a second. No, we no, just wait, might. Wait, Come wait, on. Wait. What do, you, do you don't think we're young? <laughs> well, Cat, I was, I was, thinking, I was thinking more of beer bongs and bikinis. But that being said, <laughs> will this create a greater divide and fissure? between the parties as if there, there couldn't be more of a divide. You know, uh, thank you for putting that image in my head, uh, Daryl. That will live with me forever. And I don't want to speculate about what Daryl does on spring break. That being said, yes, I think this is going to deepen the divide in America. This is not good for anyone. And I think that's where a lot of frustration is that a lot of members share, that this is not the proper process. This is not, this is unprecedented. And there is a credibility problem that we have at the highest levels of government. People are incredibly scared skeptical of their government, and this just further adds and compounds to those concerns and skepticisms that Americans have, regardless of party. So I think this is going to further divide America, and it's all rooted in a political witch hunt because he is an active candidate for office, he's going up in the polls, and I think this is going to increase his poll numbers rather than bring them down the way they had hoped. I think for conservatives and for liberals, it's this is not the first witch hunt. We go back to the 2016 election, and you had the whole Russia collusion yeah. right. fiasco which the FBI and the DOJ Absolutely. were involved in, um, as was the CIA, and they investigated the pants off Donald Trump, and they didn't find anything. They turned his life upside down. So there's number one. The Congress uh, impeached him twice, not once, but twice. They raided Mar-a-Lago, also historic. I mean, these are historic firsts that Donald Trump has had to go through because you've had a Congress and a liberal media who has absolutely hated him. And I, I think the consequence of that is most fair-minded Americans look at what's happening in Manhattan and go, listen, this is just more of the same. You're just persecuting a man that you hate because of politics, but not because he's done anything wrong. Well, you're exactly right. And I, and I do believe that what was once called by Richard Nixon the silent majority are the people who are listening and saying, this doesn't make any sense. They're not normal Republican voter, voters nor normal Democrat voters. They're the people who actually look and weigh and, and would go one way or the other. And in this case, I think they're going to see this as extreme, uh, inappropriate. I will say that there is one thing, one little sign of relief, and that is this is a petty act by somebody who was elected with 211,000 votes. This is at least not uh, the central federal government using its weaponization. 
And if, uh, if President Biden is, is looking at this, hopefully he's urging caution by his attorney general and others to stay out of this because I think it's going to backfire. Well, even Van Jones, who's on another network, a well-known liberal, had urged uh, Alvin Bragg to stay his hand and urged caution. Some intensely anti-Trump Democrats uh, had urged caution and, and tried to uh, preach cooler heads uh, regarding Alvin Bragg's pursuit of the former president here. But as we find out, the Manhattan Grand Jury voting to indict former yeah. President Donald Trump. Yeah, Congressman Nessie, you made a, a, an interesting point. When I said, you know what, you might have a, a, a Republican DA that once Joe Biden's out of, out of office, uh, they may prosecute him. And you said, you know what, I would join in a, in a brief to push back on that prosecution, back on that indictment. And to that point, do you think you'll have any Democrats in Congress stand up and stand with you two to go, you know what, this is wrong. You know what, I might not like Donald Trump, I might not like his policies, but persecuting a man that we disagree with politically is breaking this country, fracturing this country, and I'm going to stand with my Republican friends and go, this is way too much, enough is enough. Do you think that will happen from Democrats? Well, you know, we've already heard it in the hallways that they'd like to get back to some level of decorum, uh, but you don't hear it uh, on the dais, you don't hear it on the news channels. Uh, so those people that are saying it to <clears throat> us in the hallways need to get a little bit more out there on their own, buck their party at least a little and say, you know what, this is not uniting America to go forward and it serves very little purpose. Uh, as you can imagine, nothing in this indictment, even if he is convicted, uh, would really make a change in some behavior. Uh, this, is, this is the kind of a witch hunt that can only serve to tell people that in the future, if it works, you should try to indict people to keep them from winning elections. And that is, as the president said, third world type behavior. And that is a scary future for the country. Uh, Kat Kamek and Congressman Darrell Issa, thank you both for joining us and talking about this very important issue. Thank, thank you. you.